so many questions in so little time. Are you familiar with the situation, and I'm wondering who the genius is that they decided Stalin was such a great um, mind and visionary that I think they actually sliced his brain up in thin little wafers and they got it placed in drawers. That's question one. And question two, Chancellor Helmut Kohl said he didn't think that he'd see reunification of Germany in his lifetime, and yet a couple of years later, there it was. So do you see any similar kind of revolts or changes in the world? Uh, it was Lenin's brain that was sliced. Uh, it was Stalin who ordered it sliced. <laughs> and that's why the story itself, because they made the mistake of bringing in a German specialist. And the German specialist took the slice back to Berlin and started giving talks. Uh, the, Stalin's idea was um, Lenin would be God and he would be Jesus Christ. So he had to establish Lenin as God. And you establish him as God by showing that he had best brain ever. And so that was the whole idea. But this German guy, Hoyt, uh, very prominent, took a slice back and started giving talks in which he said, um, characteristics of Lenin's brain are, such, are shared by geniuses and by mentally retarded. <laughs> and Stalin then had to get rid of this guy. Uh, but he was fortunate because uh, folk got on the wrong side of Hitler. And I think at age 56, I uh, was inducted into the Wehrmacht. So Hitler took care of it for him. Uh, unexpected events. Uh, no specialist on the Soviet Union predicted the collapse. Uh, my prediction is the collapse of China. And I don't think, uh, I think it's going to come unexpected. Uh, so usually when you see a consensus, you should uh, be very skeptical. And the consensus. Anybody agree with you? Yes. You just said about China. Yeah, I'll do it real quick. Um, those of us who studied the Soviet Union knew that it didn't make sense because we studied the enterprise, and the enterprise doesn't make sense. And if the, if the basic core unit doesn't make sense, the, it can't survive. So we had this knowledge. But then we got fascinated with growth rates. And the growth rates look fine. And so somehow we looked at growth rates in other places. Uh, what I see in China is something very similar, but China has advantages. Uh, China is promoting a state, a state enterprise, state capitalism. And if you look at what they're doing, they're making tremendous mistakes. Uh, the one-child policy was a tremendous mistake. What's keeping China going is the fact that they have private enterprise and they have an open economy, something that Russia didn't have. So Russia just fell apart, and we didn't expect it. China, I think, will fall apart more slowly. Uh, but that's, you know, if, if we want to think about what could happen that we're not expecting, that's what I would say. So a few years ago, I was sitting with my neighbor who was from Russia, and we were, uh, uh, this is a nine-year-old woman, and we were drinking vodka. And uh, she said something, uh, no, her husband had passed away, it was remarkable. Uh, but she said something that made me, uh, take pause, and that is that growing up in Russia, which she did up until uh, World War II, um, the people in her area thought uh, Stalin was absolutely wonderful. And maybe you could shed some light on why the Russian people thought Stalin was fabulous. When, when Stalin died, there was mass hysteria. Uh, People were weeping in the streets. There were there were riots. Um, a friend of mine, his wife was almost killed by being trampled. So as far as the Russians were concerned, that's all they'd heard. That Father Stalin, you know, beat Hitler. Father Stalin was taken care of. Um, it was only until 1956, when Khrushchev made his famous secret speech, that the truth was revealed. At that point, uh, quite a few members of the Communist Party committed suicide. They didn't know, or at least they claimed they didn't know. And this is this set off the Hungarian Revolution and so forth. So uh, as of 1956, people kind of knew. Uh, now they know everything. 
but they really don't want to know. Because uh, if you're a Russian, you've lost the, Ru you've lost the Soviet Empire, uh, you've lost your pension, you've lost your job. You need to have something to hold on to, and that something is the victory in World War II. And uh, you will hear repeatedly that we won it because of Stalin's iron fist. So uh, if people want to know, they, they know everything. But Stalin still does very well in popularity polls, something like 30%. So, you know, these are odd polls. Who are the greatest figures in history? And they have trouble finding anybody because no one remembers um, the old czars um, or the old prime ministers. So Stalin's bound to turn out pretty good because they at least know who he is. But uh, about a third of the Russian people rate it very positive. And I think this will go on until um, current generation, the oldest generation dies. Okay. Let's say give Dr. Gregory a big hand. We'd like to present our appreciation and recognition of uh, your wonderful talk and uh, distinguished guest speaker and dedicated service to the principles of American liberty, Dr. Paul Gregory. Thank you.